Well, President Donald Trump says he'll have a major announcement next week on the opioid epidemic, which has claimed hundreds of thousands of lives in the U.S. He made the promise following news reports about a 2016 law which allowed drug companies to flood the U.S. with prescription narcotics. Republican Congressman Tom Marino was a driving force behind that bill, and until Monday, he was also Trump's choice to lead the Office of National Drug Control Policy, the so-called drug czar. So he was a very early supporter of mine, the great state of Pennsylvania. He's a great guy. I did see the report. We're going to look into the report. We're going to take it very seriously because uh, we're going to have a major announcement probably next week on the drug crisis and on the opioid massive problem. Uh, and I want to get that absolutely right. This country and, frankly, the world has a drug problem. The world has a drug problem. But we have it, and we're going to do something about it. Joining us now, Reef Kareem, the founder and medical director of the Control Center of Beverly Hills. Uh, Reef, thanks for coming in. Um, earlier this year, a commission chaired by the New Jersey governor, Chris Christie, recommended uh, that Donald Trump, the president, declare a national emergency. Mm -hmm. Here's what Governor Christie said speaking back in August. 142 Americans are dying every day of drug overdose, every day, which means we have a 9-11 scale loss every three weeks. In America. So the first recommendation we say to the president is you must declare a national emergency, a public health emergency that will empower your cabinet, the executive branch, and motivate the congressional folks to be able to fund this. Okay. Um, at the time, the president a few days later said he would declare that mm -hmm. emergency. He never followed through. Yep. If he does, uh, is there an immediate impact here, like funds are available, that regulations are waived, do governments can act, right? Yeah, it's, it's one thing to have money. It's another thing to do something with that money. You have to have a plan. You have to have a strategy. Creating a national registry, bringing Narcan to as many places as possible, teaching medical students, teaching doctors, they're limiting the pharmaceutical company's ability to distribute these pills to doctors, regulating doctors, regulating pharmacies. There's a lot you can do. But these declarations of national emergencies of something like a hurricane or a flu epidemic, mm -hmm. short-term immediate crisis, done and dusted. This national emergency declaration, if it happens, will not solve this problem. No. This is a long-term thing. This mission. is a long-term thing. This is not something where the president goes, oh, it's an emergency, let's fix it really quickly. No. This is a long, long-term strategy. Think about this. Three times as many people have died from this opiate crisis than Vietnam. Mm. I mean, we're, there are more people dying from this than car accidents, than gun violence, than so many other things. It is, it is the elephant in the room of our country. And 80% of the world's supply of prescription narcotics are abused here yeah. in this country. It, it, this country consumes enough medication that every adult could be medicated for if it was evenly distributed for three weeks or something I think yeah. why is this problem so unique to the United States well a big one is we all know this the pharmaceutical companies but especially when they started doing consumer marketing mm. so it used to be the doctors were gatekeepers to prevent pharmaceutical companies from directly talking to consumers about their medications then suddenly that changed and doctors weren't being wined and dined anymore now it was direct to consumer marketing and that's why we all see these commercials about all these pills and the weird things at the very end of all the problems that these pills can cause so that's a big one but also it's our it's our connection to pain mm. for some reason in this country people are so more apt to pop a pill to make all their problems go away instant gratification. or to yeah. numb and escape with instant gratification than other countries do right. and and it is a real this prescription pill problem is very significant and is one of the main reasons we have an opiate crisis okay the president said he was looking into that report by the Washington Post and uh, CBS 60 minutes which talked about this efforts by the drug industry to weaken uh, the laws uh, so they can contribute to distribute these drugs here's one part of that 60 minutes report in case you didn't see it if I was going to write a book about how to harm the, uh, the United States with pharmaceuticals, the only thing I can think of that would immediately harm is to take the authority away from the, 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 the investigative agency that is trying to enforce the Controlled Substances Act and, this, and the regulations implemented under the act. And that's what this bill did. And that was the bill which was basically shepherded through Congress by Tom Marino, mm. who probably will no longer be the drug czar. Better not be. How, how much damage did that law do, even though it was only on the books for a very short period of time? This law makes my blood boil. 
we are in such a significant epidemic right now and Congress decides unanimously, unanimously, no objections, to pass a bill that basically makes the opiate crisis worse by limiting the DEA's ability to, to, to monitor and to stop prescription drugs that have abuse potential, opiates, from getting onto our streets, let alone the hands of doctors or pharma pharmacies that are overprescribing these medications. This is a huge problem. If you're going to do something about this opiate crisis, do the opposite of this. What are you doing? Right. Oddly enough, it was called the Ensuring Patient Access and Effective Drug Enforcement Act of 2016, yeah. which is the exact opposite. Reef, good to see you. Thank, Thank you. you.